Hello and welcome back. It is the car time once again. I'm Aaron Brown. I'm Justin Westbrook. And today we have a good show lined up. We're going to talk about cars we hate and we think should die. Uh, you drove a car. I drove a very, very cool car, which I was very excited about. A 90s Japanese car, mm. which you will see. And then, uh, and then we have a special guest coming in to talk about even more JDM magic. A very special guest. Stay tuned. So Justin, today I want to talk about cars that just should not exist anymore. They need to Ooh, die. Their de demise needs to happen. Yeah. And the first car on my list, which actually came to my mind because of a because of a story you wrote mm -hmm. earlier this week. Yeah. The current generation Toyota Land Cruiser. It has a super old V8, which does 13 miles per gallon city and 18 highway. So in the story that you wrote, uh, there was a report that would actually lose the V8 mm -hmm. and get a turbocharged V6 and then right. potentially later uh, a hybrid V6 yes. option. And like that seems appropriate. I hate myself for doing this and I don't want to campaign Good. for the death of the V8 or for turbocharged V6s because I hate, I'm not a V6 guy, but like. You sound like a V6 guy. Like can't they do maybe like cylinder deactivation in like the V8 and like do something right. or like one of those, I I'm don't know. I'm sure the people at Toyota have not thought of that. Sure. I like the Land Cruiser because you're buying into that, the, the legacy of the Land Cruiser, which is not about fuel efficiency, it's not about being cheap, it's not about driving in the city, it's about this like overlanding experience and this car with your jerry cans of gasoline on the back and your like outdoor cool hipster lifestyle. People don't do that anymore, but that's like the image that that car is. I'll tell you a car we should kill, and that's the Mitsubishi Mirage. What don't you like about the Mirage? A lot. Okay. I don't like that it's ugly. I don't like that it has a tacked on rear view camera because it's been around so long they didn't have anywhere else to put it and it doesn't look good. It's not doing Mitsubishi any favors. I want them to go back what to building- What car is doing Mitsubishi any well, favors? Well, nothing, but it doesn't help that they got rid of cool sedans that they used to make. What's a car on your list? My list? Yeah. On my list, I also have the Chevy Impala as it currently um, stands. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan. Chevy has cars like the Chevy SS. Like, why can't that be the Impala? Why can't the modern Chevy Caprice PPV be the Impala? Why does the Impala have to be some bland, like, terrible old person car that's mm -hmm. like, front wheel drive and gross and yeah. ah, it yeah. just pains me. Kill right? it. For example, the Caprice, the PPV. It's yes. a six liter V8, uh -huh. rear wheel drive. It's a cool, it's such a cool car. So you, you wanna, know? You wanna kill the Impala because it's not cool? Yeah. Right. Yeah, kill the Impala. Okay. It's old, it's gross, it's boring, it's... Ugh. If you have strong opinions about the cars we spoke about today that we think should die in a fiery death, let us know in the comments. Or if there are other cars that you also think should die, also let us know in the comments. So, Aaron, uh, you were gone for a little bit. You were down in Virginia, and I heard you drove a car. I drove a great car. I was down at Duncan Imports wow. down in Christiansburg, Virginia, yeah. as you said. They have a huge JDM lot, a ton of awesome imported cars, also some like American classic cars. Oh, but there's cool. one car on the lot which I could not stay away from. We shot a little video with it. Go for it. Check it out. Hello, Aaron Brown here, social media editor for Jalopnik. I am very excited. My face is bright and happy because I am in a very rally-ish car. It is a 1994 JDM. Celica GT4. Now, you rally fans out there probably know this car because it won and cheated in a big WRC rally, but I am very excited because I'm actually driving it. It is a 250 horsepower uh, turbocharged four cylinder, um, and yes, let us see what it does. All right, so we're driving. Oh. That was like a mild, like a medium throttle. Oh, and the turbo's just right there. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> it's the first time driving this car. I am very, very excited. I'll show you a shot of this car's four headlights. Very, very cool, very rally-ish. I was telling Raf the other day how cool this would be if it had a proper rally light pod, um, like up on the hood. But yeah, let's see. Take it easy, because we're in a weird industrial area. All right, we're in second, let's see. Foot down, boost, boost. A little bit of wastegate noise. You heard that blow off valve. <laughs> oh man, this is cool. It's not that quick, but it's quick. It's. Uh, I was just in a bunch of like 50 horsepower cars. This feels like it has a thousand. <laughs> True. 
The steering feels super dragged. It's a big mystery what these cars are like because we never got this generation in America. It's a 1994, so freshly imported too. Mm -hmm. Freshly imported car. Welcome to America. This is sick. I'm in love. This is awesome. It's not as quick as I thought it'd be, mm. but it is quick enough. Definitely quick enough for rally. Definitely yeah. And in, in WRC spec, significantly more powerful. I'm sure, especially when it's cheating. <laughs> yeah. Justin, you look mildly different. Hello, I'm Rafael Orlo, features editor at jalopnews.com. It is Raf! And wow. I am here to talk about three things. Um, I'm here to talk about generally the history of that bubble era. But before I do, there are two things I want to talk about about that video, which you didn't quite get into because it was oh, very God. short. Yes. The first of which being, you're a Subaru guy. You're Mr. Subaru. I do love the Subarus. I've owned many. Yeah, this was this was like the car from before Subaru really had its like golden era. It's true, and you know what? That's totally fine. I, in addition to loving Subarus, I do love like a good rally-inspired or homologated, turbocharged like all-wheel drive car, and that is exactly what the Celica GT4 is. Of course, the Celica GT4 is cooler than all of your Subarus because it has a bit of history. And that history is the cheat that you mentioned. And I figured that we should talk about how it worked. Tell me about the cheat. So um, the cheat was very ingenious and was in fact described by the technical super director of the FIA at the time, uh, a guy named Max Mosley, who has some history that I will tell you to look up and not mention on camera, um, who called it the most ingenious cheat he had ever seen. Very good cheat. Now, at the time, people described the car as seeming to be significantly more powerful than other cars that were racing at the time, but no one could figure out how they were doing it. What they were actually doing, and this was found out, I can't, I can't even remember how they figured it out. The only way they were able to like prove that it happened was slicing the component in half. They had a secret little inlet within the turbocharger which allowed an extra amount of air to pass through the legal restrictor that all cars had to share. So it was some sort of secret flap which was closed every time that it was inspected, but when it was actually out on the road, it was open. So every time they went to look at it, it was legal, and every time it was actually being in use, it was cheating. Yeah. Super fascinating. I highly encourage you to go Google it on jalopnik.com. We have a whole article on There's it. There is a story on it. Yeah, no, it's wild. They just went around the restrictor plate. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's it, racing, you know? It's not racing if someone's not cheating. Absolutely. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. So Ralph, what are you doing here? What are you here to talk to me about? Well, I've got a story for you. A story? Yes. Story time? Is it story time with Raph? It is. It's story time with Raph. Me. So Ralph, what is the story you're telling me? What are you teaching me today? Well, I reached into my reference library of old car styling magazines and found this. Not exactly the car we were talking about, but the relevant Celica in question. And didn't tie back exactly to what we were talking about, but I did find something in here which is topical to that whole video series that we were engaged in. We were doing a video down in Virginia, which will be on our site soon. But Raf, tease our audience, what are we talking about today? Well, you see, we did a whole video series, not just on that Celica GT4, but on a number of cars of the bubble era. And this whole magazine is filled with all sorts of interesting cars of that heady time period. And I happened to find in this exact magazine another car that we drove. Oh my god. Which is, look at this fun little guy. Oh, the Minica? It's a Mitsubishi Minica Tapo. Now, to you, this may look like a completely ordinary, plain van. It's a little <laughs> tiny, what you call a K car van. Right. Now, what's interesting about this is they have very specific restrictions in Japan as to how big a K car could be, how large its engine could be, and how powerful it could be. Right. And this one is interesting because even though it's a very pedestrian van, which is designed for a very pedestrian sort of job, the Mitsubishi Minica Tapo, you could order with what was called a Dangan head. Mm. And the Dangan head yes. was put <laughs> five valves per cylinder on your four cylinder engine. So even though you only got 660 cc of displacement, you got a turbocharger, you got an intercooler, and you got 20 whole valves. Five valves per cylinder. Now, Mitsubishi was the very first car company to put five valves per cylinder into production. They beat Ferrari to the punch. So this is basically better than a Ferrari. And it's a tiny van. Kids, take note. So the bubble era was a time when you could find Ferrari-grade technology in something as simple as a tiny little van. 
And now you may think to yourself, wow, this level of investment seems unsustainable. And it was. In 1991, the entire economy collapsed and uh, cars like this were never seen again. Raph, what a shame the bubble era bursts like that. Mm. Imagine having cars like that today on the roads in New York City, rolling through Times Square. One can only imagine. That'd be beautiful. I'm, I'm so sad to say that the bubble has also burst on our episode of Car Time today. It is over. I'm so sorry. But yeah. Raph, what an honor, what a pleasure for to have you. <laughs> Thank you for being here is what I'm trying to say. Thanks for having me. I'm sorry that your producer yelled at me when I tried to talk about 40 more minutes of material. One day we'll make it happen. Thank you all for joining us. What an honor having you too. I'm Aaron. Take care. Hi, welcome back to Car Time. This is Aaron Brown. I'm Justin Westbrook. We're going to talk about a list of cars we ate. He drove a car and then we're bringing in a special guest who's going to talk about even more JDM cars.